Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy, and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So guys, today I am going to talk about vitamin C. I had some requests over the past few months in the Facebook group to talk about some of the supplements that I use. So for the focus of this video, I'm going to start with only vitamin C. And if you want to hear about it, just keep watching. Oh, it's my lucky day. I've got a break from the noise outside. It has been so crazy noisy in my neighborhood because they're doing some work and there's just no escaping it. So if it starts up again, let me apologize in advance. There's nothing I can do. So yeah, I'm going to talk about vitamin C today. And first, let me state my usual disclaimer, which is that nothing that I say on this channel should substitute for the advice of your own qualified practitioner. I'm not going to be giving any individual medical advice on this channel. So I've gotten some requests in the Facebook group to talk about any supplements that I use. Now, I have done previous videos on that. It was very early on in my channel that I did them. So I thought, let me just revisit like one at a time and see what the response is. And today I want to start with vitamin C. So one of the reasons that vitamin C is a really good one to start with is because it has so many benefits and it's really so benign. Like it's very difficult to hurt yourself with vitamin C. If you look up vitamin C and you look up some, there are warnings about if you take too much, there's like a theoretical risk of some kidney damage. I mean, you would have to take like scores of thousands of grams of vitamin C a day. And as when I went looking, I couldn't actually find a single case report that that happened. So I think it's actually more of a theoretical risk. I know that there are very large doses of vitamin C that have been used in some clinical trials in intensive care patients to try to tamp down inflammation and also vitamin C that looks really prominent missing in some early clinical trials when it's being used for patients who are suffering with sepsis in the intensive care unit where the mortality rate is quite high and was significantly reduced using high dose vitamin C intravenously along with niacin and I believe a steroid. And that's beyond the scope of this video, but suffice it to say that vitamin C has a lot of benefits. Vitamin C is a profound antioxidant. It's an anti-inflammatory. Vitamin C in your body will work to eliminate free radicals which can be the product of having come in contact with things, but some free radicals are also the byproduct of just the work of metabolism. There's always some waste in any process like that. So vitamin C is really good at going around and cleaning up and scavenging away those free radicals. Vitamin C also enhances the production of collagen, so it's very good for your skin, especially for aging skin, and that's one of the reasons you see so many vitamin C serums out there. That's beyond the scope of this video, but also ingesting vitamin C does help with some collagen production. So vitamin C is widely marketed, is widely available, all different brands are out on the market, and all things being equal, it's probably okay no matter what you want to use. It's cheap, you really don't have to pay a lot for vitamin C unless you have uh, particular issues that I'm gonna talk about here in just a moment and why I use the particular preparation of vitamin C that I use. Now, you do see when you look in the literature, it's very mixed, okay? So you see some things that say, yeah, no, it doesn't help, and some things say, yes, it does help with things like colds and viruses. When I try to sort this whole mess out, and believe me, there's just way too much to really get a definitive answer, but it seems to me that the no's kind of largely break down into a category that I call, well, we can't parse it out. So if you can't parse it out, then the answer is no, vitamin C doesn't help. I find that that's a little bit of an immature, but yet a very common approach to supplements that you see all over the place, right? Well, these supplements, we don't really know that they help, so don't take any supplements because they're just a waste of money. I don't really look to uh, medical journals to tell me what, what to do with my money, so I'd rather just find out you know, what works and what doesn't work and how it works, and then I'll decide whether I wanna go ahead and spend the money on it. So as far as the research, if, for, if you really wanna parse it out and dig down, there is some good research and promising research that shows that vitamin C is possibly very helpful, particularly, like I said, in being an anti-inflammatory antioxidant, and certainly it helps to boost collagen production. Now, vitamin C being a water-soluble vitamin is something that cannot be stored. It's not going to accumulate in your body and cause any damage. I, like I said, I haven't found a single case report indicating any kind of damage that anybody has done with vitamin C. Now, you would probably have kind of an upset stomach before anything else would happen. So before you get anywhere near a dose that's way too high for you, you would probably cut it back yourself because it would be an unpleasant side effect. I think a thousand milligrams, which is one gram a day is very reasonable. Again, check with your own practitioner. I'm not giving any particular medical advice because I don't know your medical history or what be, might be intermingling. I personally, I take a thousand, which is one gram per day. 
that the RDA, particularly for some of these water-soluble vitamins, and I think for vitamin D as well, the RDA is just too low. Now, with some things, you can get a simple blood test and see where you are. That would be like vitamin D, but that's beyond the scope of this video. So with vitamin C, I'm not aware of anything like that. There are some more rather involved testing that you can do. It's not the kind of thing that's ever covered by insurance, but it looks at what's inside the cells. So it's kind of a sense of how well you're absorbing things and using them over like a three month period because that, it, again, it's looking in the cells. So it's not just what's traveling around in the bloodstream. I actually did a round of that testing a while back, and what I found is that it wasn't something that surprised me. I'm celiac, so we have a little bit of trouble sometimes with absorption, and particularly water-soluble vitamins, so that would be something like a vitamin C. So for that reason, I went to this very unique, it's a patented formula, Livon Labs, that's the name of the company, Livon, uh, lipospheric vitamin C. It's actually a fat encapsulated vitamin C so that it works on principle more like the way fat soluble vitamins do and it's more easy to absorb. Now this has been studied and it has been shown to be much more absorbable. However, I think if you don't have an issue with absorption, I, I'm not, I don't really think that you need to go out and spend this kind of money. You can get vitamin C so cheap and you know, if you're not sure, you can always take more. So in my case, I decided to go ahead and use this largely because of the celiac. And because I had the empirical testing showing me that I didn't have as much in my cells as I would expect, given what I have been taking prior to that. So I use the lipospheric vitamin C by Live On Lab. So the reason that this is so well absorbed is, like I said, because it has a patented formula where it's fat encapsulated. So just a quick explanation about fat versus water-soluble things. So when something is fat-soluble, in a nutshell, that really means it can cross membranes in the body more easily because the membranes of your human cells are made out of what's called a lipid. That means fat, so a lipid bilayer. And anything that's lipid-soluble has an easier time passing through those membranes. Things that are water-soluble water have to be brought in through carriers or some kind of active transport. In general, substances that are lipid-soluble have a much easier time crossing membranes in the body, and therefore they are better absorbed. So inside this box is several little packets, and it one, this is one dose, and it's basically a gel in there, and what you do is you tear open this packet, you dump the gel into just a swallow of water, like literally an ounce, and you're not supposed to dissolve this. It won't dissolve, okay? It's just kind of a globule. It's a fat globule, so it's gonna sit there in the water. I just swish it so that nothing is sticking to the side of the glass. Take a big swig and that's done. This is a thousand milligrams of vitamin C, so that's what I take daily. Now, my sense is that even if you don't supplement with something like vitamin C, that it's a good idea to, at this time, just given this pandemic that we're in, I think that even if you're not a fan of supplements, there are a few supplements you should be taking. I did a video really early on in the pandemic saying what I was doing in light of the pandemic. I'm gonna give myself a little pat on the back here and say that I came out with mine exactly one day before Dr. Oz made his statement about it, and they were the exact four same things. It was vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, and elderberry, which has kind of dropped out of my consciousness for some reason. I don't really know why, but I think the elderberry kind of took a back seat. Uh, but in the meantime, I think I am going to not only talk about this vitamin C, uh, but I, I probably will do a video at least on the D and maybe even on the zinc. Let me know what you guys think or if that would be helpful. If you're not interested in it, I don't want to do it. There's a lot of information out there, so I don't want to be too redundant. So what I'm going to do is link this product down below in the description box. Again, I don't do affiliate links for things like this. I don't want the room for bias that something like an affiliate link would create. So it's just a link to take you to the product. You can also get this on Vitacost, which is a site for lots of retailers' items. It's sort of a grocery store for all things uh, health related. So I like Vitacost, but I do find that with this one, I think Vitacost gets it from the manufacturer because it always takes like a couple extra days and it doesn't come with other things that you I order from Vitacost. This always comes by itself. So I sort of think that they're just contracting with the manufacturer. So I just go over to the Livon's website. So in short, you know, when it comes to vitamin C, I personally think that it's one of these, it fits into the category of it might help, it's not gonna hurt. I think saying that it might help is actually uh, not quite giving it the credit it deserves. I think that vitamin C has tremendous benefits. Some people ask, well, what about getting it from foods versus getting it from supplements? Yes, I think that there's probably some benefit to getting things from foods just because the foods that these vitamins and minerals are in also have other things in them 
I, that this is, of course, just my speculation. There's other things in those foods that we haven't named and found and isolated out and packaged into pills, but there's other things in those foods that are probably helping you absorb or use the vitamin or supplement that you're after in the way that it's most beneficial. So yes, I do think that it's important to get these things from foods. However, I think that when it comes to supplementing in the doses that I'm talking about, like for vitamin C, it's very hard to get that amount from food. So while I don't think that taking the supplement is a substitute for a good diet, I do agree that whole foods are really important. Now, just as a side note for anybody who lives in a warm enough climate, there is something called a Barbados cherry tree. And I think the scientific term is acerola, A-C-E-R-O-L-A. -E it's kind of a bush, sort of a tree, and it has these little cherries on it. Uh, they really are about the size of cherries. And they have tiny little seeds in, all around in a core of the fruit. So you can eat around it and spit out the seeds. Uh, that fruit actually has per ounce of fruit more antioxidant than I think any other fruit or vegetable on the planet. And it is very high in vitamin C. I think each one of those cherries has about 500 milligrams of vitamin C in it, and it also has a lot of zinc. Now, the bad news is that you have to live in the right climate to have this tree. Uh, maybe you could have it inside. I don't really know. I'm, I'm certainly no horticulturist. But for anybody who's interested in getting the vitamin C from foods while still getting the mega dose, I recommend you look into getting a Barbados cherry tree if you can. So I'm just going to put some links below to some research touting the benefits of vitamin C. I'd be interested in knowing what you guys are doing, whether you're supplementing or not, and what you think about it. And let me know if you have any questions. And until next time, be well. Bye-bye.